be all right. He knows me. Stand up. I didn't invite you to sit down. That's bad publicity for my business, Brent. How much will it cost to re-elect you? You've been reading the funny papers again, Owen. Look here, Brent. You can't get away with it. You can't put me... I can't, but I will. You and every rat that hasn't found a hole to crawl into when that deadline is up. I've heard that before. Just around election time. Yes? Well, get this, Owen. You're a candidate right now for that hot seat up in the big house. And if you're in town by this time tomorrow, you're as good as elected. Yes, Mr. Brent. Tell Bill there I want him now. Well, what's the headlines tell the truth? You've been dishing it out a long time, Owens. It's your turn now to take it. Hello, Bronx. How are you, Flatfoot? Butch has been reading the extra. He came away up here to tell me that he didn't like the headline. Yeah, I was afraid you wouldn't know where to find me. Wrong again, Butch. That's not a bad little hideout you moved your girlfriend into. But if you'd asked me, I could have picked one with a southern exposure. Boy, you double-crossing. Wait a minute. Huh. Kick him with that present that was slipped you yesterday. Present? Yeah. A present? Kill there. Don't tell me you've been accepting presents. Yeah. That's the kind of monkey is. How do you like him now? I kind of like him. Is this what you want to take back, Owen? From a pal to a pal. Thanks, Butch, for the thought. But the brand's too expensive. I haven't learned to smoke them yet. I'll keep the case just to remember you by. When you're gone. Where do you think I'm going? Maybe for a ride. You never can tell. Funny guy. Better take this along with you, Owens, as a gentle reminder. I can't read. Wipe your feet on it. Close the door, Butch. From the outside. <laughs> what are you doing tonight, Breezy? It's taken me three weeks to line this up, Chief. But she's as swell as little Well, put her on ice. Send Miss Wallace in. Where does Louis Walsh hang out at night? Mostly over at Jess Harvey's nightclub. The new one he calls the back door. I think Louis has a piece of it. You know, they're in together on the beer racket. Still a blonde, Myrna? Huh. Yep. But still not your type, Brady. Miss Wallace. Reed's jumping out with you tonight. He's taking you to the back door. What's the matter with the front door? It's padlocked. Oh. Say, listen, I got a date with my husband tonight. Well, do the same as I'm doing, sweetheart. Put him on ice. I hate to spoil your dates, but this is important. The head looked before we were ready. This will bring a showdown between the Owens mob and Louis Walsh. Now, Butch is apt to make another try to get Louis before they get out of town. If any of them show up at Jess Harvey's tonight, you'll be there. Get me on the phone quick. We won't be three minutes away. Right. What'll I wear, Blondie? <laughs> Soup and fish? No. You might have just like a reader. You better wear dinner clothes. Besides, you have to pay for the soup and fish. I'll pay for <laughs> nine o'clock. <laughs> Oh, my husband's going to be dying to meet you. 
Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Bye now. Hey! <laughs> I know, and I know it's right. But it's right. Good evening. Well, I hope everything will be all right. Kick from the DA call. What's the matter, Ray? No, I'll keep it. Watch. I knew it. Good evening, Mr. Owen. How are you, Jeff? Fine. I, I got a nice table for you. Over there. Yeah, that's a nice table. For somebody else. We'll sit here. But, but Mr. Owen. You're dying. Get out of here, Louie. Shut up. My mob is on their way here. I don't like the looks of this, Louie. <laughs> well, do something about it. Get me around. Lower to later. Yes. <laughs> Scram the lamp. I don't want anything in front of me. <laughs> This looks like the start of a swell evening. I'd like to get to that telephone, but I'm afraid Butch will tumble. There's that flat foot again. Where? Over there by the orchestra. We tried to him one little present that he wouldn't take. But we'll give him another one tonight before we leave here. Well, here you are, Louie. What's the idea? I didn't order any, uh, uh... Sure. Chicken and casserole. Okay. Thanks. Get on the phone, will you? Find out what's wrong with that marble line. I should have been here an hour ago. Okay. More oh, chess. <laughs> yeah. Everything all right, Mr. Owen? Sure. It's a nice place you got here. You like it? Yeah. And I like the floral decoration. Who's your florist yet? Like a holocum? Yeah. I, uh, I'll tell you when I, when I come back. Come back. Nothing will happen. Yeah, it's like you. Yeah. I hate, I hate him for many weeks. Hello, Bronx. Staging a little party for the boys? Sort of a farewell party.
Hey, wait a minute. I'm next. I'm waiting for this fellow to get out. Oh, all right. Hey, come on, come on. I've been waiting long. Get going, Al. That dick. Stick here. Where's Joe? Where's Al? Where's Jim? They're throwing me down. They're laying me down. morning, young man. Think I could lick the world, Doctor. Well, here's the thing that almost licked you. Thanks. A nice little souvenir. Well, maybe someday I'll be able to give it back to the fellow who gave it to me. Oh, I guess you're out of luck about that, Breezy. The Owens gang took it on the run. Oh, by the way, I, I almost forgot. Here's a postcard that came office for you. It's from Cheyenne. It's from Dad. What's it say? Don't you ever take a vacation? Well, I'm taking one now. <laughs> You're not going to spend it here, Breezy. You're going home for that. Okay, Chief. If you think the apartment can get along without me. Oh, oh the apartment will probably go to pieces. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Oh, but if it does, uh, I'll save you a piece. Say, uh, where do you live? In a little one-horse town about 20 miles from Cheyenne. Well, when the doc says the word, that's where you're going. Well, it won't be long now. <laughs> know to get there. Shucks, we ain't used that road for two years. Got a new one. Walrus, 
didn't know him. <laughs> Ever since he had diapers on, I made him his first chaps, taught him how to ride his first horse, learned him how to shoot. Boys, meet your boss's son, Breezy Kildare. How are you? How do you know you? Hello there. Glad to know you. Good oh, day, Breezy. Really. Glad to know you, boy. I know you. Where the heck did you think you were going coming down that road? Home, I told you. And now if the old boat's a thing of the past, how am I going to get there? Like you did when you was a kid, a horseback. Well, I'm ready. Where do we go from here? We're heading for town to meet up with your pa. He's tending a meeting of the new cattlemen association. Well, me and Annie Goat, let's start. This ain't no country for dudes, Breezy. So be it! Lay off! Give me a chance for this squally! Uh, do get <laughs> Come on, get him! Come on, get him! 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 Get now then, we're heading for town. We're going places and doing things. Let's get there. Well, just tell him you saw me. Call off that horse and give him a breezy. Pronto. Here he is, breezy. Belongs to you anyway. Thanks, man. Turn him out. <laughs> Going wrong with my eyes? Breezy Kildare with walrus? Well, hang me a bit. <laughs> Hello, Breezy. Hello, Hi. Well, Daddy Burns, how are you? Have you seen your dad yet, is he? Nope, we're looking for him now. Have you seen him? Down the street a moment ago. Maybe he's in Joe Carter's. Where they're forming that new association. What association? Oh, the Independent Cattle Breeders Protective and Benevolent Association. Some name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and from the looks of things, it's going to be some association. <laughs> yes, it is. This is going to be the biggest thing in the country. Yes, your dad's going to be all right. All right, you're good. I don't care what it's going to be. My association is going to be He's got a great dad, I think. Dad, he's got a great dad. I hear this is Martin Kildare's boy, Breezy. Joe Carter, Breezy. Joe's new since you was here. Oh, Carter and I are old friends. <laughs> yeah. We have known each other for a long time. What do you boys have? Right there. Give me a little grape. <laughs> I don't think mine's the same. <laughs> I'm coming yeah, up for you, Johnny. Look at that, boy. <laughs> oh, boy, that touches the spot. Real beer. Juicy <laughs> game of pool. Sure, come on. Pretty fixing one. Yeah. I'll pay the seven or five. How long have you been selling this? I had to take in a new partner about a month ago. It was his idea. Hey, you seem surprised to see me out. Nope. I signed a petition to get you out. I am surprised to see you here. 
and back at the old racket again. I knew you were responsible for sending me up, but I didn't know that you were helped to get me out. You fell in with the wrong crowd, New York, Carter. You weren't to blame. You took the rap for Butch Owen. I hated to see that, that little girl of yours suffer for your mistake. She was a nice kid. She still is. You kind of liked her, didn't you? Yes. And she liked me, too. Until... Until I had to testify against you. She changed her mind about you after you sent me up. Oh, here's Ruth. Ruth? You remember Breezy Kildare, don't you? Yes, I remember Breezy Kildare all right. I ought to. Joe, you're playing with dynamite again. This stuff will never get you anywhere. She's too nice a kid to be working in this atmosphere. I couldn't throw this stuff out now if I wanted to. It's too late. It's never too late. Well, I got you. Where is he? There he is. There he is. I feel like crying. Same here, Dad. Gosh, it's good to be home with you again. Well, if ever a father needed a son, it's now. Well, Dad, I'm home on a vacation, so I'll load your trouble. It'll take too long. Come on and get first-hand information. Because you can learn more by attending this meeting with me than I can ever tell you. Come on, Breezy. <laughs> Breezy Kildare was right. This won't get you anything, except a lot of trouble. Why do you have to do what they want you to? We've got to quit. We've got to get away from here. Every cent I've got is tied up in here. I don't care. I'd rather be broke, out of it, away from them. When did this happen? It's happening in there now. And that's why this organization is going to be a big help to you, gents. We're here to give you protection. That's what. And now you'll hear from your president, gents. He'll tell you about the benefits to be received from this organization for the small initiation fee of one grand. Mr. B.H.O. Well, well, hello, Brun. Hiya, Flatfoot. Sorry your little operation kept me from getting here sooner. It's like I got here just in time. You're a friend of this man? Sure, Dad. Butch is always giving me presents. This is a closed meeting, Hildea. So close the door as you go out. Now. Just a minute, Owen. This concerns my boy as much as it does me. And before we join any protective association, we want to know what for. For protection, Mr. Kildare. Maybe your son can... Well, you can't get away that out here. These gents seem to think this association will do them a lot of good. Hence? So that's it, eh? Well, how's he going to get it? By dying patching gunning the little kid to get in his way? About the men they knocked off. Who to buy? Sure, they'll raise the price here, but you won't get it. All right, Bush. I can wait. Come on, Dad. 
That kind of an association you fellas want, you can have it. Wait a minute, Kildare. I'm going with you. Sit down, gents. You both better come back while the membership's open. There's only going to be a place of beef in this county, and no one but members of this association are going to get it. My father was in the cattle business long before I ever heard of you, Butch. And I guess we can get along without you now. Close the door from the outside. Getting kind of careless, Butch. Ought to have been bulletproof. I mean, Mr. Kildare. I never thought I could feel this way about it. I'm not a copper <clears throat> out here. I heard what you said up there. And I, I want to be on your side, if you let. Now you're talking. And having just stairs, I understand why your father said that he couldn't help himself. Well, I'm going to help him. And you, if you'll let me. beyond the bend. I can just see them. Oh, yeah? Well, get going. The thing is to keep them guessing how everything happened. Before we're through with them, they'll be willing to pay any price for protection. Better go. down some of your best stairs. Put your I don't know who. They had a machine gun because I can hear it. Larry! Steve! Come here! Hurry up! In case anyone asks you, I haven't left this building today, do you understand? Yeah, I understand. You've been here all day. And don't forget it. You may have to swear to it.
didn't. In case your father forgets, you remember that we haven't left this building today. You understand? If you boys want to join my gears out there in the flat, reach for it. Line them up on the other side of the room and keep there. Where's Butch Owen? He's, uh... Yeah, I know. Been there all day. Yeah. Now you fellas reach for a crowd and hang on to it. Play with me, your old man will put another rap. Do you get that straight? Last chance. Too bad these coppers forget their manners. Always busting in on people. Ain't got any respect even for ladies. I've got lots of respect for a lady. But I hate rap. out of a barn with that cannon. You can't bluff me. No, nor me neither. Try that again. Too bad I had to break into your social activities, Butch. But you'll have 24 hours to finish them. Because I'm giving you just that long to get out of town. You're what? This Cheyenne country isn't big enough to hold you and me. I'm staying. If you stay, you're on the spot. Well, you certainly fix things for me. Yes, and for your old man, too, if you double-cross me and play along with that copper. And right now, he thinks you belong to me. Oh. Put it away, Walter. All right, you can pick him up. Maybe you don't believe it, Kildare, but I want to thank you. Because you did what I haven't got the nerve to do. That's all right. Breezy. Breezy, you don't think that Butch O. 
one than I are. What else would you want me to think? Sure. You're his. You handed me a wallop when I saw you upstairs with Butch. This last one sure knocked some daylight into me. It made me, made me realize that, that you're okay. Forgive me, please. Let's forget we're out west. Let's picture back home in New York again. What do you say? You mean like it used to be before you became a copper and Dad went away? You said it. Then you don't think that Butch and I... Don't are. say it. Excuse me, but... Uh, <coughs> say, why don't you knock before you enter? Oh. <laughs> Hey, Joe. Set up another round. And make it snappy. The boss is sore. Here you are, honey. Take it up. Well, what's the next move? What are we going to do now? Well, what do you think? We're going to take Kildare for a ride. A nice, long ride. Going to put me on the spot. Well, by this time tomorrow, there'll be plenty of weeping around here. You can put your order in for flowers right now. What? Go 20 miles to Cheyenne for flowers? Oh, forget it, you sap. Where's the typewriter? Oh, I left it downstairs. Well, get it as we go out. Come on. Butch is going after Breezy. What? They're going to take him for a ride. They'll do it. No, they won't. I'll tip him off, but the last thing I ever do. Operator. Operator, will you answer? <laughs> now, you stay here and keep your mouth shut. If you don't, we'll fix him up when we come back. Get your typewriter, Sap. Come on. Dad. They said if we opened our mouths, they'd come back and get you. Oh, they did, eh? Why, well, they'll only get me once. Operator. They, they don't answer? Oh, they must. There must be someone there. Let me have it. Operator, please, please try again. There's no use. They don't ask there. Maybe I could be put there. Not a chance. You'd have to pass them on the road to do that. I won't use the road the way I'll go. Yeah, they left in an automobile, headed for Kildare's ranch. You gotta move fast. 
All right. I'll call some of the boys. You phone Pearson and Thomas. Know the numbers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know them. Okay. Operate. Operate. Let me have 294. Hurry it up, will you? I'm not worried about a few steers being shot, Freezy. I've been working all afternoon. It may have been a work, Dad, but when you're playing with Butch Owens, you've got to work fast. Well, I've got every cattleman in this country rounded up to go after Owens. You may have everything set to wipe Gangland out of the West, but it's easier said than done. Well... What he want to take a ride with that gang of crooks for us? You don't understand. He won't come back for him. What? But just the same, Breezy. I tell you, I don't like it. Everything's going to be all right, Dad. for Dr. Ruth, and don't leave until I get back. Oh. Wally, you come on with me. Carter got us word to get here quick. The Owens mob just left here. They got my dad. What? You men follow the road. We're going to take the shortcut and head him off the rock. Right. Come, Come on, on boys. Right into their range. 
me your rope. Now let them come. right at the end of the barrel. It won't be long now. Now where you got to take it. Here's a little present you gave to me. <laughs> don't I get a break? I bet you don't. There's no lawyers here to pull a habeas corpus, but there's a gang here that'll pull a rope. Get up. Give me a break. Sure, we'll give you a break. We'll give you a rope in a tree that ain't ever been used before. Still yellow, Butch. You couldn't take it. Cheyenne to New York. Yep. Back to the big town. Now the dad's well again. There's nothing to keep me here. I wish it read the other way. You mean Broadway? The Cheyenne? Uh-huh. Shuck. There's no sense in my going then. Alone. Uh-uh. <laughs> 